So, hey everyone, um, my name is Toby, I'm from Vienna um, and I'm a freelance consultant um, working with React and Node.js. Um, besides my um, client projects, I'm working on Spitbee, um, which is an analytics and AP testing platform. We just launched on uh, Product Hunt today, so feel free to upvote there um, in case you haven't done it yet. And yeah, let's start. Um, um, my talk today is about type safety between the database and the front end. Um, so this, this was a big part of the project, um, so split B. Um, and I will talk about how I achieved that and what tools I've used. And I prepared a little um, live coding session um, to show you how it's done. So the problem. Uh, is um, when you want to get full type safety um, from the database to the front end, you will need to have types on the database. So for example, if you have MySQL or Postgres, um, you, um, the database is typed. So you have um, varchar, text, and integer, and so on. So this is one is typed. Um, then you want to have server-side types. Um, if you're using TypeScript, you have a class or yeah, you have your types there. Then um, if you are going to use uh, GraphQL as an API, you also have a GraphQL schema. And as we know, um, GraphQL is also a typed API. Um, then we have our front end, um, also in TypeScript, um, which is also typed. So these are four steps you would need to write a, a type or a copy the TypeScript type um, to, to the client. And yeah, there can happen a lot of um, issues. So um, a possible solution that I chose uh, is to use a type arm, type GraphQL and GraphQL code generator. Um, type arm is a node library that uh, helps you um, it's basically a object relation model so you can um, model your class uh, in typescript and add annotations to create a table in this example you see um, i have a class called user um, with the annotation entity um, you're great you're creating a new table uh, called user and this table has two columns. One is an automatically generated column, which is an, uh, called ID, which is a number, and the second column, which is the first name uh, with a string type. Um, the second thing is type GraphQL. It basically looks the same, just we have other annotations here. So we have the object type to define a, uh, an object in the GraphQL schema. And we have the field annotation to define a, a exposed field in the GraphQL API. So we have again field and first name. All these annotations uh, take the type from uh, the TypeScript class, but you can overwrite them or um, define a custom type if uh, they can't resolve it automatically. The last thing is um, GraphQL code generator. This is a, a tool that you are using in the front end. Um, all you need to do there is you need to define your GraphQL schema or the API endpoint of GraphQL, and it generates you um, types. So there are multiple plugins there. Um, so you can, for example, get TypeScript types um, that are synced automatically with your GraphQL schema. In our example later on, we also use a type that generates um, React hooks um, that are also typed. So um, now let's get over to our live coding example. Um, I've prepared a little demo here. So um, in this example, I'm going to um, create a little recipe app. So this is it for now. Um, we just want to render a list of recipes. Um, out of the database and we will add an, uh, yeah, I will show you now how it's done. So we have a, a server, which is written in Node.js and TypeScript. Um, the important part here is, uh, are the entities. So one entity is our recipe. As we, uh, you have seen before, we have um, a class, a TypeScript class called recipe. And what we are doing here is we have uh, one annotation called entity again. This is the TypeScript, uh, the um, database um, annotation. So this will create a new table called recipe. 
um, then we have this again generated column and another column. So if we just add uh, these three entities to this class, we automatically get, so this is a database uh, front end tool. So we have here the recipe type, um, column with an ID and the title. Now we also added um, the object type, which is the GraphQL object, and we have uh, the field annotation to expose these fields. Um, what we need to do also is to have a resolver because we can't just query a GraphQL type, so we need a resolver. In this case, we have a recipes resolver that just returns a list of recipes. So we can import our entity we defined in the class and just write uh, recipe.find. So this is now a type arm class. And we also can write where and have type safety by querying. So we can write like this, but we want to get all um, recipes. So how this, does this API look now? We have the GraphQL playground. And as we can see here, um, we can query our recipes. Currently, there's just one. We see, OK, we can query title as well. And if we now add uh, something to a database and run it again, it's here. So um, now we want to render our list in our front end. So we have our uh, Next.js project here. We have um, a GraphQL file, which basically just defines the query we had in, in our example before. So we are querying recipes with ID and title. And because we have CodeGAN um, set up here, um, we are generating types and hooks automatically. So this is the generated file afterwards. What we can do now is we go into our render page and we have here the generated query that's uh, generated by um, GraphQL CodeGAN. And what we have now is we can simply write res.data.recipes. Uh, so we know that it returns recipes and we want to iterate over them, recipe. And we now want to render a div for each recipe. And if we now press dot, we automatically get um, the possible attributes a recipe has. So title, for example, if we save this, head over to our demo app, we see it's already rendered. I've prepared a little um, styling that it looks a little bit better. So it does basically the same. I just added some styling and uh, the key that React knows um, what to render. And now it looks like that. So now we want to add a new field to our database because we want to have um, ratings. So what we can do now is we add a new um, attribute to our class called ratings, which is a number array. And because number array is not supported um, by Postgres, we need to define a type here. So it's a JSON format in the database and default is an empty array. We just saved that. Now we can check our database. And as you can see, ratings are already here. We'll add some to our recipes, save it. And then um, we want to expose our ratings, but not uh, as an array, but we want to calculate the uh, average rating um, that will be displayed in the front end later on. To do that, we can simply um, add a calculated field. So this is just a new field again in our class called average rating, um, which returns a number. And we have this average function, which takes just uh, the array of numbers from the database and returns it. So if everything works fine, we should now be able to um, query that. As we can see here already, average rating is available and we see that it's already returning. So um, next we want to um, display this on the front end. The only thing we have to do is we have to um, add the, it to the query. We save it then it takes a couple seconds to regenerate our um, hooks and our TypeScript types. So now it's done. 
and we head over to our render page um, and we want to render it just here in our list. We add a new div um, type recipe dot and we already see average rating is here. It can auto complete that. We will add a star here. Save it, head over to our demo. And we already see the average rating is displayed here. Now to be sure we add something else. Save this. And as you can see, it's calculated and only exposed via GraphQL. So, um, so in summary, what we did now is we uh, created a class on the on the server um, server side using TypeScript, and we added annotations to either um, expose a field via GraphQL or um, sync it with the database or do both at once. Um, we generated our client hooks and types using GraphQL code generator. And yeah, then we have types of F type safe assets everywhere. Um, I hope you liked my first talk. And if you have any questions, you can ask them now. Yes, what a great talk. Shout out to GraphQL coach and, and Urkel. They're absolutely fantastic. Um, and I, I got to check out type one. That looks really, really, really good. If anybody has questions, throw them in chat. Uh, somebody's asking for the GraphQL code chain config again. Yes. Um, so here, um, the GraphQL code can config. So we have a schema defined here, which is the GraphQL server. You have to define the, a GraphQL queries um, um so this is a regex or a, a matching pattern where are your queries are defined um, and then you can define multiple outputs um, so this is the file name where it should be generated to and then you can add plugins they have multiple plugins on the page so typescript is basically just plain typescript types um, then this Urkel, Urkel is for our hooks and if you're using you should use that. There is a plugin for Apollo and so on. And I'm not sure what operations is for, but <laughs> I needed that, of course. <laughs> and yeah, of course, and you need to add um, if you want to have support for hooks and don't want to have high order components, um, you need to disable those manually in the config. And as you asked in the chat, I wasn't here in the beginning. Is that a Node.js backend? If so, how come you are able to use TypeScript? How do you use TypeScript in your Node.js backend? Um, I made it pretty easy. I just used uh, Next.js um, because they have a pretty fast setup. So if you um, just add a TypeScript uh, file there, um, they automatically generate the TS config and all stuff around. So there's uh, you can start really fast writing TypeScript apps using Next.js. Check out the docs. With Gatsby 2. Gatsby 2, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for Toby? Uh, if you haven't, I posted a link to the product time post for Splitbee early in the chat. You should totally upvote it so we can get some money. So we can um, pay his I rent. Also, he doesn't die on um, the streets. <laughs> <laughs> I have also this project is open sourced somewhere, so I can also post it here in case someone wants to take a look at it. Oh yeah, you should post it in the chat. Yep. Share that in the chat. Here it is. Nice, so if you look at the chat, you'll see a link to the GitHub repo. I'm gonna start that right away. Star, I'm the first star. How is that even possible? <laughs> I no, use no, it's in the description, of course. But what about factor. styled components? I've submitted an issue. You just mm. got spammed. Oh, damn. I'll All right. Make it private again. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have any questions?
about his TypeScript setup, GraphQL setup, anything. Did you know that you can disable issues? Yeah, through that. <laughs> you can keep Max from spamming you by just disabling issues. All right, if there's no more questions, then thank you, Toby, for speaking. Um, thank you.